Hey, it's Tom Saviella here. I hope you enjoyed our show, Talking Maine with the Bowtie Boys. It's a resource that we're able to bring to you through Mount Blue TV. If you would consider making a donation to Mount Blue TV, you can go to the website and it'll take you right to that place where you can do that. Let's keep Mount Blue TV going. It's a gem for the area and helps our show stay on the air. Welcome to Talk in Maine with a Bowtie Boy. Ruby just reminded me that the opening says boy, but actually it's boys because we got Chandler Woodcock probably off chasing white lions. <laughs> I don't know where he is, but he'll come on the show. I'm convinced after the first of the year. But I want to have my friend Ruby. Ruby. Hi, Tom. Ruben, having you come back. Thank uh, you. Talk a little bit about white lions, but so we can refresh our audience's memory. Mm -hmm. Tell us about you and how you got involved in this, because I think that really connects directly to the uh, animals we're going to talk about it today. It does, it does. Well, I was, um, I, I love animals, and I was listening to a webinar from this woman, um, Linda Tucker, and she was talking about her white lion experience and her involvement. And I knew before the webinar was over, I was going to go to South Africa and spend some time with her. And I just, I really, like taking care of or thinking of that I make a difference in the welfare of animals that we want our children and grandchildren to to see someday rather than for them to be extinct. Now, so from that you actually ended up taking a class if I remember correctly mm -hmm. that caused mm -hmm. you to travel around to some of the other things. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the class that you were involved the in. The class was, um, it, it was out in California, it was online as well, um, Communication with All Life University is the name of the university and it's now becoming accredited uh, to taught in schools as well. And it's really taking all different aspects of animal life and the animal kingdom and wow. getting involved with it somehow. Wow, so you, you were actually studying life cycles of different animals or? Uh, just what's happening with the plight of animals around the world and communicating with animals and, and um, we had to do certain side things like I did tea touch which is a way of touching an animal to calm them down if they're afraid of thunder or fireworks and different ways you can can handle an animal like Henry. Yeah, uh, well you just woke up he's going to come to visit us now. Henry. Henry hi buddy. Go <laughs> lay down. Go on. <laughs> lay down. He's, he's a character. He's <laughs> my buddy though. He's my good buddy. So, he's so white lions did you take the class before you went to visit or did you just Decide, no, I got to do this. I joined the class while I was in South Africa. Oh, wow. I joined, I signed up while I was there. Yeah. So, all right, so take, take us to South Africa. So you get this. So tell us the story because just quickly reading the, the back of the book, mm -hmm. I cheated. Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about how she, came, Mrs. Doc, is it Dr. Tucker? Or, uh, Lin, no, Linda, Linda Tucker. Tucker how uh -huh. she came in contact with the lions yeah. on a yeah. unique vacation experience. So share, us, share the no, story. No, it wasn't actually a vacation oh. experience. She is a white South African, and she went to, she studied in Cambridge. She had a very, very uh, successful career in London. She went back home for a visit. And in her 20s, she and her friends were out on a Jeep on the Savannah, just hooting and hollering and drinking a beer or two, and their Jeep broke down. And a couple of them went, oh, how much time do we have in our light? Where are we? And a couple of them went to get help. She stayed in the Jeep. And soon she realized, by she was hearing, she was surrounded by white lions, by lions. She didn't know they were white. And she's... Like, what am I going to do here? Am I meat? You know, am I di yeah, am dinner? I dinner? <laughs> am I dinner or dessert? And so all of a sudden she saw this figure walk right through the circle of the white lions. It was Maria, and she's a medicine woman there, barefoot. She had wrapped around. She had a baby on her back, and, and she came and sat next to Linda and said, they've chosen you to be their guardian. Wow. And she said she quit her job in London, moved back to South Africa, and started learning all she could about the what? plight of them. In the 80s, there were like 
just a, maybe two white lions left because in South Africa, it's legal to trophy hunt. And white lions were known for, you know, they would raise them for trophy hunting. And they put them in a cage about a, as big as a studio. And then shoot them. Shoot them. Oh, my goodness. Men so would come even, you know. So they didn't even have a fair game hunt on them. No. Oh, wow. No. So she learned all about the history of the white lions, and they belonged in the Timbavardi area, which is near Kruger National Park in South Africa. It's the northern part of Kruger. And she's, and then she, one of her friends was a, a lion scientist, and since then they have hooked up partner-wise in all ways. You know, they're, um, they've got a part of Kruger National Park. It is fenced right now. Eventually they're hoping to bring all the fences down. But they find the white lions, or they find a tawny lion that has a white lion gene in it, hoping to pass on the white lion gene. And now there are about, I don't know, maybe a dozen of them now. So in talk the wild. about the white lion a little bit. What, where, how did it, did it, where is it in its evolution? How did it come about the best that you know? I think white lions are the first, probably one of the first. Lions. From her account in the world, you know, this is where our animal kingdom began in, wow. in her reference. And they belong there. Now, there are about 300 white lions in zoos. There may be now a dozen in the wild. Just a dozen? Not wild. that many. Wow. Yeah. Does, is she communicating with those in the zoos to be part of this breeding process so that you keep the gene pool wide? Or? They those are not going to be able to go back in the wild. Right, I understand that. So, yeah. so what she does find is she finds, possibly intercepts the trophy raised ones. Like one of them, I think it was Mariah, um, was going to be set to be a trophy uh, cub. And she intercepted that. And for three years, it took her three years to adopt wow. this lion cub. And it was the start of it coming all back. Wow. Wow, because I just saw that quickly because she talks about Mariah in there. And yeah. She said the, the most influential, day, important day of her life was when she finally got Mariah free. Yes. And how yeah. she'd argue with So Mariah yeah. was going to be a trophy lion, yeah. had been yeah. bred purely for that. Yeah. No, so she got her out? She got her out. I'm not quite sure how she did. Yeah. It was with a lot of hard Arguing. maneuvering yeah. and with the government and everything, but she did. And. So the, this uh, trophy hunt just fascinates me. It's sanctioned by the government. And they, it's legal there. Wow. It's a big form of income. I income. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But their tourist, I believe that their tourist industry would hold them fine if they... I would think so, with all what yeah. they have to show in that country. Ah, they've got so, so many things, things yes. So tell me what you, what you did with the lions. What, what was your experience like? So we went, we stayed on the property where the white lions were. They have a lovely little, they have, everything's, their buildings are circular because dark spirits lay in corners. So uh -huh. we stayed in these beautiful little circular huts. And um, they have, all of their lions are collared. So they go out, Jason and, and Linda take you out. And he puts up a little... Antenna. antenna and he can tell exactly where the girls are where the boys are what they're doing and then we go every day and spend time with them we had a most amazing experience where we were in an open jeep and as close as i am to henry which is what six feet yeah. maybe 10 feet they were and the two boys were sitting on one side and we as a group, we get, go into a meditation just to get calm, you know, just to let them know we are not there to hurt them. And I, you know, I have to throw in my mom was like, "Do you guys have guns on the?" And they don't take guns out there because truly, animals know what's in your heart. And I said, "Oh, you know," they would say to us before we go out, "No ill intent out here, you know. We're here to observe and to be part of it." So. We had the most incredible experience where we were doing this meditation. The two boys were over on our left, open Jeep, close. And uh, one of them gets up. And I just happened to, I mean, my meditation was not with my eyes closed when there were two beautiful white lines there. Yeah, I had yeah, to say, right. I had a soft gaze. And I was in the very back of the Jeep on his side. And he walked right to me. 
and we learned something called the slow cat wink because we don't want them to to think that we're there for any other reason but just to be, to there. be there so you you have to bow your head and you just slowly look up when they're looking straight at you and he came walking right to me I did the slow cat wink and then we connected eyes and it was like he stared at me for like I mean a minute I just sort of leaned back a little bit because you've got like a, yeah. Well, yeah a big male lion looking right at you gorgeous he urinated and he walked around to the other side then the second one did the exact same thing at the end our guide said that whole ritual they surrounded our Jeep, they urinated around us, was including us in wow. their pride. Wow. Which was, the, the guide said he'd never seen that happen. Wow. So we were in the right space. For so that. how many were you in the Jeep? Was it four or five? Or? There might have been eight of us. Wow. That's yeah. going to end. And he, did they then sit back down? or did they? Then they laid right back down on either side of us. So they surrounded us. Wow. Okay. It was fascinating. Wow. So do we have a picture that we can show everybody? Is it time for a picture? She's got one up right now that's just a picture of the white lion. So this lion. is so the Global White Lion Protection is Linda Tucker's group, Global Heritage. And the, all we were not allowed to take any pictures of the white lions that they are that they have there because for safety purposes. So all the white lion pictures you see, except one that I did see in the wild, and I'll point out, are from their photos. So, so, so we hold on this one for a minute. Yeah. They are white, are they really white? Yes, they are not albino. They are white, white. lions, that's the gene, the white lion gene that they have. And the ones, the regular lion are more of a tan color? They're tawny, they're called tawny, tawnies. Tawny yeah. color, so, so you, you think sometimes in the tawny, if they show a little bit of symbol, uh, exhibit some of the traits of a white lion, there might be a white lion gene in there? I think they have to get the blood work they to find to out. I don't know if it's a, it's a characteristic you know, that they will exhibit, but yeah, wow. they're gorgeous. Go ahead to the next one. Yeah, these, these are, are the, the these are the boys. Yep. yep, and it's really interesting. The mane is all testosterone. Oh, really? So the women don't have that. The girls don't have that. The men do. And then the little at the end of a woman's tail, the female tail, is a little hair. That's testosterone. Huh. Interesting. Do their manes get really big and bushy, or are they short and, and stout like? No, these they are? get big and these are young boys, wow. so they get big. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Gorgeous. And then this one's a little older, so he's, it's coming down longer than the main. So is she in the process of mating these? Yes. Uh, so she's so on purpose trying to p stimulate the population. Yes. She's got a big enough gene pool. To she's do. got. Well, no, not necessarily. Right. But she she'll have two girls, two sisters, two brothers. Then at certain ages, they have to divide them because they don't want the interbreeding, and then they have to keep looking for another white gene or white lion that they can bring in. So they're constantly on the search to keep it growing. Wow. Yeah. And how many does she have now? I think about a dozen. About a dozen. And they have to keep them all separated. Yeah. And even when they separate them, the, the brothers and the sisters will still talk to each other. You can hear them roar back and forth to each no other. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so yeah. this is a picture of one kind of Now this is in the, this is, I took this picture and there's a series of these, I think, and there were two of them there. And, um, yeah, look yeah. how the, the nose is a heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is actually one in the wild. Yes. So this is not one of her brood that she's no. working with. No, this, you can see it's not as white. It's a little tawny. Okay, so he's, he's not a purebred in the sense. He's got a little bit of the uh, regular yes. lion in yeah. him. And, and this is close. And you can see that really is a tawny. That's a wild one. Um, see how dark wow. that one is. And this is at the in the Kruger National Park, or is mm -hmm. this, so it's right next door to them. This is in this area that he's in. Is it fenced off, or is he? No, this is a no. It's the it's whole park open. is wow. open. Yeah. Wow. And that's theirs. That's their property, and you can tell the difference between the last picture and this one as far as color wise yes, goes. Yes, absolutely. You can see the white in his mane mm -hmm. that he's got back in there. Mm -hmm. So how old would these guys be? Well, the one up front looks. I mean, it's a family yeah. looking here. Um, the one up front looks quite, the male looks old, ready to, to have a family, yeah, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Do, do, Look at those them. gorgeous. Are those uh, those not, are. Are those the boys. brothers? Those yeah, those are, not, are the brothers. So that somebody took, you didn't take these pictures. No, but no. those are the ones that surrounded us. Oh, they are the ones. Yes, oh, those okay. are the brothers. Oh. Now, what do they eat? <laughs> when they bring them here, it's amazing what they've done. They have them in different areas that they introduce them to their new surroundings, and then they eventually open up another to another area. But they pull a whole curtain across so they don't see a human feeding them. And they will throw them huge carcasses of something over. And then they wait for a period of time when they should start to be hunting to see if they're able to hunt themselves. So they'll slowly wean that off. Then they bring in like a whole truckload of wildebeest. Yes. Wildebeest. Huh, like the and guys. then those are one of the easiest ones yeah. for them to catch. And, and it's interesting to see how the parents teach the young ones to, to hunt and how the young ones are sloppy at first. And then a, a very sad story about, I think it's, it was Mariah. Um, who are the ones that go into the ground? There's... Um, like groundhogs or? I know, it's bigger than that. I was surprised, I can't think of the name of it. But they, the lions will dig into their tunnel and they have a signature move called the corkscrew. So they'll dig their in head first and then they'll flip over to get into that tunnel <laughs> to get it out. Um, it's coming. <laughs> like a prairie dog or something. Um, a warthog. A warthog. Warthog. Okay, okay. warthog. I could see it. The name was escaping me. And then they pull out the warthog. And the warthogs are very dangerous because they've got their little horn. They can really hurt them. One time, the ground was very dry and it collapsed in underneath. And they lost, they lost her. And uh -huh. it was a huge loss. The boys weren't quite ready to be on their own, but... So that's that was, how they lost Mariah? They then. lost how, that's how because they lost Because they caved in on her. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It doesn't happen that often. Wow. But, wow, yeah. that's too bad. Yeah. Wow. So keep going. Tell some... So did you get to... Did they're, these guys are wild then, so you, they are treating them as they're wild in these pens. So they're oh not, yeah. So they're, they're not, not like pens. They're like usual. acres and acres and acres. Yeah. Wow. And so they're not like the baboons or the other things that we've no. seen where you actually got to go out and hold them. These are, no. These are being prepared to go back into the yes. wild at some point yeah. in time. To allow them to survive in this world, yeah. Wow. Now, this must be the compound with the round houses? Yes. Yep. Yeah. This is where we stayed. Um, and they have lovely people making delicious meals for you. And then you have early drives and late drives, sun, sundowners. And, um, then now, we did it, research there as well. We, when you do your drives out in the field, is it more like you're just going to make contact to find out where they are and what they're up to? Yeah. It, so it's not to go disturb them? Or no. It's just to kind of no. how they move for the day so you're documenting where their movements have been exactly. during the day. Exactly. And have they successfully hunted? You know, have they not? And they can tell by the, you know, the way they're laying, if they're prowling around what time of day it is they can they can tell so like in this picture that we're looking at they look like they're pretty happy and satisfied yes yes i think one of those probably and they have different times of day that they hunt so usually evening is a good time you know because they're white so they want to be undercover a little bit as far as their color goes but they're yeah, that's a happy family there. Now, is it true that the females do all of the hunting or do the males help out here um both do it, but the females are pretty efficient. Yeah, this is great. This is Jason holding up the um, radar thing, and this is one of the gals I traveled with. It was funny because she had her little orchestra. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, opera glasses. <laughs> opera yeah. Gla yeah. glasses, and I had to take a picture of that. But it's just an open jeep, and we go out, and he's finding out where the lions are that day. And there they were. <laughs> God. So it's it's pretty dry there. I would take it. Yeah. It's, it's not doesn't have a rainy season or anything like that. It may it does have a rainy season, but when we were there, it was it was fairly dry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just they're gorgeous. That's Linda and Jason. So that that's a couple, and she's the one who got really turned on to this, involved in it when right. they first came back. And, and he was or was he from South Africa too? Yes, he was a well. I'm not sure where he's from, but he was a good friend of hers, and he had been studying lions, and it was just a perfect match. Match, yeah, for them to get together and and continue on their mission. And she really, she's connected to shamans and Indian 
African groups there that really believe that the white lion is, you know, they're, they should honor them completely. Did, so you, did she ever see the, the Charmin lady, the medicine lady, again after he came through and told, she came through? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In fact, we went to see the medicine lady's daughter. Oh, wow. And she has, um, she collects bones and feathers and rocks and she has them in a bag. And we each got to be, have a special moment with her in one of the round um, enclosures. And we asked her one question, you know. She threw out the bag, and by where they fell, she told you the answer so with, through an interpreter. So she, this is not a question necessarily related to lions. This might be related. It could be. Um, you know, mine, mine was about um, how can I, what can I do to help the animal world, and, you know, where, how can I get in to... So what did it, what, can you share the answer? Well, she was saying that nature is your, your church. She, I mean, she knew that I just, and she was saying just keep studying, keep following the path, and it will open up, and I mean, it's, you know, a general... So this is her daughter, so she's passed, then the, the, the medicine lady? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And the chief of the African group has passed also down to his son. So they, the next generation is carrying it on. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. We've got some more pictures. Beautiful white lion. So that's one oh, of theirs. Wow, that's a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. Little baby cub. Few more. Now this is just the, the landscape around there, but if you look closely, that that mountain sort of looks like a lion. See the two eyes? Yes, I do now. <laughs> yes, I do. Two dark, two yep. dark lions, and the kind of the mouth underneath yep. it's dark. Yeah. Shading is just right. Looks like a lion. You're right. Yep. Oh. And this is another. It's called God's Window. It's part of South Africa's gorgeous landscape. It's not part of their land only. No, no. So that's, is that part of their national park? That's not part of Kruger National Park. It's just we were traveling wow. through South Africa, and that was a place we stopped at. Yeah. Same thing there. Beautiful scenery, yes. South Africa is gorgeous. Is it really? It really is. But it's, it's all dry, though, isn't it? It's not, it's not a... It's, it's pretty it's dry. dry, yeah. yeah. It's, so this is at her location, and we studied quite a bit what we can do to bring this back to the world for people to be aware of it or to teach people. And she has developed this leadership, lion-hearted leadership training. And she was telling us all about that. And Jason is telling us about the plight of them. He was sharing all that with us at that. That's so is a lion leadership training to help the lions, or is it a leadership training class? It's a leadership training class for the young people in South Africa. And now she's taking it to the world to learn to she, what she's learned from the lions. Wow. You know, how you can be a lion-hearted leader, you know, fierce but kind, and, and all, she's got a, like, I think a 12-step lion-hearted leadership program. I learned it from the lions. Yeah, so this is the school that they, they started the lion-hearted leadership program, and the children all get involved, and... Now, the children are tribal children, or are they local children? They're all local. All local children. All local, yeah. And they, they did a little... They told us what they thought about the white lions and did a little show for us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so their heritage is such that these lions are important to them. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they I mean, recognize it's, it's that. It's like their religion. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really part of their life. And, and the lovely gals, they're just beautiful children. And What do their parents do? I just, curiosity, do they do for work around there? I don't know. That's yeah. a great question. Yeah. I mean, they work locally, yeah. just yeah. doing... I always wonder when I go into a local community, what is the major uh, workforce, what do they do? So yeah. what do you do during the day? Yeah. That's, there's Linda and, and me. Wow. And on her, her place. And she's just so gracious and so open and, you know, would take hikes with us in, you know, you could hear the lions roar when we were sleeping and they were just right there. They were all around us. <laughs> It's a good picture. Beautiful, beautiful animals. So she's got, you said, what, 12, about 12 I there? Think, I think she's got about that many now, and she's continually working on, on growing that. And a relationship with the government, are they on board with what she's doing? Are they she has to challenged? work, yeah, there are challenges with that. She cannot understand why they don't 
make them endangered, which they should be because there's just about a dozen of them in the wild and it's really a beautiful thing. Oh. This is the one, I t a picture I took of one. In the wild? Mm. Wow, what a beautiful picture. And I think, yeah, he's roaring for me and it's like a hoo, 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 when, they, when they do their, and the whole body moves. It's a, and it's the male usually calling the female or saying, where are you? Saying, where's dinner? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> there he is. Wow, what a beautiful picture. What a majestic yeah. animal. Oh, very majestic. So did you have any warnings while you were there? Like if you got too close and they didn't really like you, what you should do? Not no? at all. No. Not at, we, we never, I never felt fear or, you know, they just, they weren't interested in us. You, you weren't, looked very tasty. I it's guess just, not. This is, we went and spent a, an evening with the African tribe that, that, that the medicine woman is involved in. And they did a, their, the children even showed us in the schools. They learn how to do this dance that's a ritual for them. And uh, they were doing that there for us. The, um, now, so how long were you there? About two weeks. About two weeks. Yeah. Now, have you gone back since? Or just Not there. I haven't been back there. Just to the other places yeah. you've gone to. Yeah. So if somebody wants to get in contact with you to answer it, so we'll, we'll put that up right here. Yeah. The, your home phone, 293-8101 and www.cccglobal.earth. That's it. And that's your website, which yes. I've gone on to look, look on. And so if some people have other questions about white lions, they can call you there. They can call or email, and the information about Linda is all on there and, as well. And, Vicar, can we get a shot of the book? I know I didn't ask for it at the beginning, but while we're doing that, so people can see this too, because they may want to go online or find a place to get this book if they'd like to read more about the White Lions. Mm -hmm. Probably be a good idea. So have you been in contact with her? Whoop, let me see if I can get there, get the lights right. In yes. contact her since you've left? Yes, I've, I've done several, actually, not you didn't hear that one, but I've done several talks around about the White Lions and um, People have given donations, so I've been in touch with her to give her the donations for to help them. And so if somebody's interested in doing that after watching that or wants to have a talk on the White Lions after watching this phenomenal show that we've just done, <laughs> they can get in touch with Absolutely. you to do that. So Absolutely. would you go back someday, you think? Oh, I would love to. Yeah. I would love to. I have to share with you that um, we were talking about orangutans, and I had adopted a orangutan named Peanut. Well, I have a wonderful announcement to say he is in the wild. No kidding. Yep. Oh, wow. He, he, I just got a, a letter from them saying that they have put him out in the wild. He has not come back, and he is happy. So Peanut was the little guy that but yes. you, you saw the slides in a couple of weeks ago. He was learning how to swing and learning all from yes. his big brothers. But his big brothers are still back there? I don't know. They didn't tell me what, oh, what, what happened with cool the big story. brother. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. And I also want to tell you, because you wanted to know, the um, YouTube channel is up. Okay, and we ran that the last time you were here, so yes. if somebody wants to see that and wants to go on to it, they yes. can go back to a prior show that we did. Which one? We did that in the second show, I believe. I think so. It's called Curious Kids Global. Curious Kids Global. Yes. Curious Kids Global. Say that five times fast. Curious Kids Global. And so you can go on yeah. there and do that. Yes. Where's your next trip? Where's your next adventure? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just... Um, Absorbing all of this, but I do have a little clip that um, we put in there. Is it ready to run it here? Uh, okay. JP should have it. Yeah. We got time. Run the clip, JP. And it's about the uh, the white lions. I think we get there. Here we go.
Thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. And maybe next time we can come on and talk about another animal. Thank you very yeah, much for it, having and me. And this is great. So appreciate we'll it. see you next time. I hope you learned a lot about white lions. I did. Thank you. <laughs>